We are surrounded by deep paradoxes of nature. And down here on Earth, or a million light years away, science is our best tool to make sense of it all. How can it be that nature's weakest force, gravity, underpins some of the most extreme events since the Big Bang? And what can we hope to learn about the fundamental nature of reality by studying gravity at its most extreme? I am Dr. Lionel London, and my research focuses on various topics in gravitational wave theory. We aim to both understand general relativity, as Einstein told us, but also go beyond and learn about new physics. Ultimately, our aim is to provide nothing less than unequivocal evidence for a grand unified theory of nature. My story began in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. At great peril, I was that kid who took apart everything in the house and tried to put it back together. When I was seven, I told my mom that I wanted to be a priest. Some judicious experiments called me elsewhere. And then by 11, uh, I'd landed on physics. While I'd found my heading, the path was far from certain. I can hear the sound of chains breaking. Science, like so many things, is an act of play. The sound of history We listen to music. We hear that next beat. Our minds revel in the rhythm of it, the structure of it. And in many ways, trying to see beyond the limits of current science is like trying to anticipate that next beat or the next lyric in a great song you're hearing for the very first time. So walk within the footsteps the generations have made all. Oh, I can remember. So it's no surprise that at the turn of the 19th century, scientists thought that gravity, like electricity and magnetism, was a force. It was Einstein who pointed out that fundamentally new concepts were needed to explain observations. There was an awareness that no matter how fast or slow you're moving, the speed of light as measured by different observers was always the same. And it was Einstein who said, aha, time itself and space are a part of the same geometrical object, space-time. And so it's in this sense that gravitational waves are not waves that move atop space and time, but rather they're waves in space-time itself. That somehow simple yet profound. It's not just that Einstein introduced new concepts into physics, it's that he revealed a new layer of reality. So today, Einstein's theory of general relativity and amazing ongoing experiments allow us to detect distant events in the universe using gravitational waves. And it's this gravitational wave universe that allows us unparalleled access to some of the most interesting stories in nature. Imagine you're a little kid with maybe a sugary drink and a straw, right? You're a bit bored, so maybe you're creating a little vortex in your cup. Now, believe it or not, and I would like to encourage you to believe it, that the vortex has many similarities with the black hole. Waves on the surface of the water, if they get too close to the vortex, they have no choice but to be sucked down into the middle. This region in the vortex is analogous to what we call the black hole event horizon. Once you go past it, you cannot come back. The very nature of causality changes. Most stars in the night sky are actually not alone. They come in binary pairs. Black holes are really quite similar. Now, if we take this analogy of black hole being a bit like a fluid vortex, then it perhaps isn't too difficult to imagine a fluid vortex in one place and another not that far away. Now it turns out, just as in water, that black holes will slowly move towards each other and merge. This system is called a binary black hole system, and this process of slowly moving towards and merging eventually is referred to as binary black hole coalescence. On September 14th, 2015, the LIGO observatories in the US detected gravitational waves from a binary black hole merger. And I mean, just the fact of that uh, caused me to be in awe. For weeks, I look up at the sky and I imagine 
these just tremendous cataclysmic events going on out there in the universe, and that we, with our tiny little brains here on Earth, could actually detect them. The mass of each black hole was enormous, around 30 times the mass of our sun. And it was around this time that I thought to myself, there must be something, something that I can contribute. And it was then that I realized that actually, we had enough information from simulations of black holes colliding, along with good old E equals MC squared, to estimate that about three solar masses of energy were radiated in only 200 milliseconds during the collision that we detected. If I tell you a story about a crazy night out, you might want to ask for a photo to believe it actually happened. The science is, is basically the same. We want experimental confirmation of our theories. I've been a part of the LIGO scientific collaboration, which includes ground-based detectors all over the world. These efforts are really essential. They allow us to actually collect data from gravitational waves passing through the Earth from sources millions of light years away. But one fundamental limitation of ground-based detectors is that the Earth is constantly shaking, constantly rumbling. And this creates a source of noise that is a fundamental constraint to the sensitivity of ground-based detectors. So what do we do? Um, well, one idea, uh, which many of us are very fond of, is to put a detector in space, orbiting around the Earth at what's called a Lagrange point. LISA will be placed on a geosynchronous orbit 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth. And each component of LISA, which we expect to be a triangle, will be separated by 2.5 million kilometers. And this is ideal for interfacing with the structure of space-time around the detectors. The interesting thing about a detector like LISA is that it's able to detect gravitational waves from extremely massive systems. Systems with black holes that are millions of times the mass of our sun. In the future, we will be able to detect gravitational waves from the entire observable universe. This really opens up the kind of science that we can do with these detectors in the future. We are rapidly moving towards a future in which we will not be able to detect just single gravitational wave signals one at a time. Like individual instruments in a band, we will have a veritable gravitational wave symphony it will really allow us to begin to hear for the first time in human history, new stories in cosmology, in stellar evolution, but also in fundamental physics.